Olivier, you use coproscopy a lot nowadays to support your advice to your farmers. Yes, but it's a tool we've been using for a very long time. We've been using coprological exams on our farms to monitor parasite infection levels for over 25 years. It's true that the tool has evolved a bit over time. We've always done pooled fecal egg counts for economic reasons. We can't afford to do individual fecal egg counts on farms. What has also changed over the last 10, 12 years is that when we do pooled fecal egg counts, but it's no longer us doing the pooling. I'd say directly behind the ewes, now it's the lab. We send a sample of 10, 12, 15 individual ewes, and the lab does the pooling so that each AOA contributes equally. And you use this tool to check the effectiveness of treatments? Exactly, and that's really this field project, Anthrum, that brought us to this, where 15 days after the treatment, we do another pooled fecal egg count, one on treated and one on untreated groups, or if everyone was treated, we take a sample making sure the use were treated, and to see the effectiveness of the treatment. That's actually a kind of weak point, because if we get a fecal egg count that doesn't show a reduction, a reduction rate over 95%, well, we have to go back. Either we redo the coprology to see if we reach the same conclusion, or we call on the vet school to redo some individual fecal egg counts to be sure that we're not dealing with a real resistance, when it might just be a treatment accident, or a AWA that wasn't properly treated, or that didn't respond to the treatment. Coproscopy is, is frequently, fecal egg count or, mm -hmm. or fecal analysis, analysis is frequently used. Um, can you tell us more about uh, this tool, uh, how it can be used, and eventually if there are some uh, word, if you have some word of caution mm -hmm. uh, on interpretation of, of the data? Yeah, so the fecal egg counts um, are the main uh, analysis is to know if an animal is infected by gastrointestinal nematodes and if it is, to which degree. Because in small ruminants, we know that um, there's a pretty good correlation between the number of adults present in the host and the number of eggs we're gonna, actually going to find in the feces. Um, and this ana uh, analysis is also um, pretty easy to do, um, non-invasive and relatively cheap. We count between 10 and 20 euros for one in one fecal egg count. And we can do it, usually it is done uh, for a group of animals. So we do bulk or composite fecal egg counts. So for example, we can separate um, animals that are clinical than from those that are not. Or for example, we, we usually do fecal egg counts on the um, younger generation and then the older generation because sometimes the younger generation is kind of going to be treated separately. How uh, we consider a good way to use it is to use it several times a year to see how it evolves, um, to see if we actually need to treat. At the point where we're asking that question, we also want to look at the animal's health, see if they are developing any clinical symptoms that we listed earlier. Monitoring that is done based on coproscopy. We do quite a few coprological exams before the key periods for the AWA at the late lactation physiological stage. End of lactation, or rather at the beginning of mating or before mating, rather before the reproduction period. And then a checkup that can be done throughout the year. But especially a checkup done before housing for those who bring them in to see how we prepare the next season. Then, indeed, at that time, there's also the evaluation of body condition. And then at the end of the season, before mating, in the case of milk production for those who are in dairy industry, allows, by combining the three, to decide whether to treat or not. How do you combine these three criteria? Well, for the fecal egg count, it's based on the discussion of the thresholds we use. So it's true that these thresholds have evolved quite a bit over time. Today, I'd say the critical threshold for us is around 1,000 eggs per gram. 
But depending on clinical signs like mortality, diarrhea, weight loss, of course, we can adjust and take into account more or less of that level. We can go much higher, up to 1,500, if production is maintained and there's not significant weight loss or if the ewes are in good condition. And then we try to treat selectively based on body condition. In fact, during this project, what we also set up ultimately was the monitoring, because we came back regularly. So I feel like you already had a very sharp sense of observation of your animals. So there are some signs of parasitism that you already knew very well. But what we added was this coproscopy monitoring, and maybe what will encourage you to continue doing this monitoring, because parasitism is ultimately managed over time. Right, I do observe the use a lot. Signs of parasitism in mutes, anemia, drop in milk production, submandibular edema. Those were signs we interpreted, and so we'd say, we have to treat, treat everyone without asking questions. But it's true that setting up individual fecal egg count monitoring proved to us that, yes, doing selective treatment was effective, and it's something we'll continue to do. Fecal egg counts, monitoring, and efficacy testing. It's something that seems essential to us for long-term monitoring of parasite management. Maybe a couple drawbacks is that um, a very practical point of view, you need to do uh, fecal accounts, they need to be analyzed pretty quickly, otherwise the results are not reliable. Um, there are some precautions to take. I, I uh, was um, saying we do composite fecal accounts, well we need to uh, sample at least 10 animals, otherwise the results are really not reliable. And also one other limit is that for the interpretation, we there are no official and very clear um, thresholds at, at which we're supposed to treat. So it's always a confrontation between the result of the analysis and the animal symptoms and what we, what is typical in that farm and what is not, also the type of production at hand. So it's always a discussion, so there's no clear-cut decision. Um, and maybe one uh, last uh, drawback is that we cannot identify which species is present on the sample. Um, that is something we'd be interested in developing. It's a, at, the in, at the research stage right now. But um, definitely that would be something um, that I think would bring further information to the farmers and the veterinarians and health technicians.